My name is Joelle Barabucci and I am here to present a paper, part of a larger research effort done together with Fabio Vitali and other collaborators from the University of Bologna. We are short on time, so I'll jump straight into the problem. The problem is that um, in our experience, the data that we collectively produce in the digital humanities, but uh, everywhere in the world, it's kind of boring. It's boring and it doesn't attract uh, all the interest that it should attract. And it's so, and it's sad to see that so many years are spent doing, for example, scholarship and interesting research, and they get summarized into data that doesn't really represent the worth of all that scholarship that has been done. I have a small example here. Let's take this. I suppose you know what this picture is. This is the Mona Lisa. And if we are about, if we want to describe it in a, in the usual record form way, we can say that the title of this painting is the Mona Lisa, the author is Leonardo da Vinci, creation date is 1504, it has been created in Florence, and the subject of this painting is Lady Lisa Gherardini. That's it, done. If we do this, we have produced something that is maybe factually correct, sometimes those records are wrong, but let's assume for a second that they are correct, even if they are correct, what do they tell us about the 500 years of scholarship that do exist on this painting. Basically nothing. What we are doing is we are taking the most interesting part of the scholarship, all the discussions, all the uncertainties, all the researches, all the things that make this uh, painting in a certain sense worth knowing about, and we are turning it into a purified fossilized, sterile set of data. And this is something that in our experience must, exist, uh, must happen because the data formats that we use, they do require us to do this. But as we have seen in the previous uh, presentation and also in other presentation previously, what happens is that this data that is produced is just the last step of a much complicated pipeline. And it's such a shame that the, the data formats that we employ cannot represent 100% of that pipeline of those discussions or of all the interesting things that have happened while we were studying those resources. So in our research, what we, the, the, what we want to do is to tackle this problem. And part of this, Research is raising awareness on the problem, and we have some publications on that. Today, I want to discuss which part, which kind of pieces of information are missing from most data formats, or to see it in the other way around. If you are developing a new data format, an ontology, something where data is written into, these are the kind of things you should make sure that you can express in your data format. And we also have some concrete solutions, for example, on how to make sure that the metadata formats like RDF or OWL can support such um, very explicit pieces of information. So this is the summary of what is missing. What is missing is, first of all, in most data formats, the ability to record the interpretation process that has happened and that has concluded with the creation of the data. Also, it is missing most of the time the ability to state more than one assertion on the same piece of data. So let's call it more than one point of view on the same artifact. I think the author of this painting is Leonardo. Somebody else may think something else. Those two points of view rarely can be expressed inside the same record. And third, we think that it should be possible to create interpretation on top of other interpretations or on the basis of other interpretations, because this is exactly how scholarship and research in general work, and that should be reflected in the data that we produce. So 
these are our recommendations. We call them a knowledge context. Um, they are pieces of knowledge that, uh, kinds of pieces of knowledge that every data format should be able to express. We will go quickly through them with some simple example. First of all, the multiple point of view, as I said, maybe it is a factual thing that a Midsummer Night has been written by William Shakespeare, but this is not actually an accepted fact by, a fact that is accepted by everybody. There is a minority vocal that said that, for example, Sir Francis Bacon wrote that. And there should be a way for our data to accommodate these two different points of view. At the same time, we should be able to, um, to record the fact that a certain artifact has lived in a specific textual, uh, sorry, temporal context. We do, we do live in a specific time and space, and that time should be recorded. And because time is complicated, we should be able to have fuzzy kind of uh, specifications. For example, the ranges, the closed ranges, open ranges. We know that this painting must have existed, um, must have been created before a certain date, because we have recordings that says so but we are not exactly sure about the, when it has been created. So we should also have, as I said, the ability to um, store where something has been created, where something has been manipulated, where something has been destroyed, and that where, just like time, is problematic because, for example, we could say that, um, that the Mona Lisa has been created in Florence, but are we talking about the nowadays Florence, the Florence at the time of the creation? Can we say that the Mona Lisa has been created in Italy, a concept that didn't exist at the time of Mona Lisa's creation? We also need to make sure that we can distinguish the part from the whole in our uh, descriptions. If we have a record of this picture, we must be sure that we can accommodate the fact that here what we have are multiple things. We have an artifact that is the combination of other artifacts, a painting that is definitely important, but also a beautiful frame that has an author, that has a creation date as well, and so on and so on and so on. We also must make sure that there is never a, that is always clear what we're referring to when we state a specific accession. For example, the title of this picture is so-and-so, or the content of this picture is so-and-so. This is a very complicated case. This is a, uh, allow me to read, a JPEG of a scan of a photograph of a page of a catalog depicting a photograph of a printing of an etching of a drawing reproducing a painting. When we say the title of this is, which of these are we referring to? And we should be able, once we have all these assertions, to be very explicit about who made those assertions, as we've seen in the previous presentation, as well as on the basis of what have they stated that their assertions, which sources have they used? Just the artifact, additional sources, what are they? And last, we should be able to say whether we are actually stating something or we are, oh, sorry, the slide is wrong. The, should, the first one should be say, Joelle reports, this is a kind of passive, information or Joel states in an active voice. I, I know that this is a, uh, I know this for a fact, or if we are just uh, making an hypothesis. So in our um, decade of experience, we have seen many different data formats and none of the data formats that we have seen have the ability to express all this context in the way that uh, scholar, proper scholarship requires. So, so what we want is future, uh, is to make sure that the old people that endeavors in data formats or the creation of new ontologies or any kind of data modeling, make sure that they do support these, all these contexts, not some of them, not just a couple of them, but all of them, because all of them are important.
by the way, if you know of any format that actually does have the ability to express all of them, please let us know. That uh, was it. I hope I made it on time. I thank you for your attention and I look forward uh, a possible discussion.